Hey guys, today we're going on a drive to Western Australia's Wheat Belt. Now I feel like everyone needs to spend some time in regional Australia to understand the scale of our country and of our domestic food production and all the elements the farmers have to deal with. I'm also going to show you some hidden gems that you've probably never heard of. So let's jump in my DIY camper van and head out to my cousin's farm in the Shire of Kelleberran. Let's go. You've probably seen photos of the yellow canola crops on Instagram, but did you know those iconic yellow flowers aren't actually the part that gets used? This is a non-GM canola crop. When they start flowering, everyone starts to travel out this way just to get those photo shots and, and have a look around. Don't trample through and, and flatten the crop down. Flowers just for uh, attracting the insects and, and pollinating and then the pods is what we want. So this will be mainly oil. Now to the lupins. These are the prettiest crops in my humble opinion. Lupins are a protein rich grain often used to feed sheep and cows and more recently sometimes being turned into a health food. This crop naturally fertilises the soil by pushing nitrogen out through its roots. See the nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots, the little balls. We purchase nitrogen as a fertiliser and, and spread it on the crop so if you can get some of that back into the soil naturally you're giving your, your paddock a break crop from cereals so it um, you get a break from all the cereal diseases. Natural protection from cereal killers. Yeah, <laughs> cereal <laughs> pests. Yes. What's this type of wheat used for? It would be mainly bread, it could go to the Middle East grow a noodle variety as well, which go Southeast Asia and, and Japan. Just starting to make grain now. The wheat plant, if you've got enough moisture, it will keep flowering and push wider and wider. Farming here is very dependent on the rainfall, so it's a bit of a gamble to invest significant money into seeds, fertilisers, machinery running costs and workers, and hoping for a good rainfall season. It's basically <laughs> going to the casino and Putting all your money on red or black. Once everything's in the ground, it's, it's up to the weather and the season, and you just try and manage the best you can. We are walking up to the best viewpoint on the farm. Yeah, some interesting rocks, aren't they? Yeah. Hey, rocks. <laughs> I've never seen a rabbit warren before. <laughs> Really? They're still getting used and fresh. Yeah, yeah, and of course, commonly known as wheat and sheep country, I found some little lambs. We had like 1,100 lambs in the paddock. It's just really funny. When you get there, they all come running at you, surround you. You've got to try and open up the chute for the grain and then drive real quick and they all chase you up the road. So this is the Goldfields Road. Uh, which was the original road then from Perth all the way to Kalgoorlie. Yeah, this used to be the, the track that used to get you there. Horse and carts. It used to be horse and carts and people walking, pushing wheelbarrows apparently. <laughs> wow, what a long trek. Yeah. All in search for a gold nugget. That's right. Now let's go have a look in the town site in Kelleberran. Only 1,200 people live in the whole Shires region, but the town has some new community facilities. <laughs> this is one of the coolest nature playgrounds I've ever seen. It's designed by landscape architect Josh Byrne using donated stone from local farms. And you can see reminders of the landscape around here. Now let's go through the little chimney hut. And this is the climbable fireplace. Uh oh! Pretty fun? Yeah! <laughs> this is shark's mouth. It kind of looks like a shark, but it's actually from the Noongar culture, it's rainbow serpent rising. And you can see inside the top of the mouth, there's actually Aboriginal art there and there's handprints, which is according to local legend, left by visiting women who had come to town to find local husbands. Maybe I'll get in luck. <laughs> so a classic country general store, you can get absolutely anything from your fruit, your groceries, your farm stuff, post office, everything you need, one stop shop. <laughs> 
Okay. Last time I was here, this was dry and now there's water in it. This is the town beach. Wait, aren't we in the middle of the wheat belt? Yes, we are. It's actually a salt lake and it's filled up with rain over winter. When it gets a good winter of rain and it gets full, people come out here with their ski boats and have a day at the beach. Cousin's son Jacob is just showing me around. This is an old farmhouse made of mud brick that's just down the road. Super cool. Trying to find a way to get in there, but there's all these corrugated iron sheets on the floor, which I think indicates snakes might be under there, so not so game. I would not go over that corrugated iron. Oh my god, you're crazy! Whoa, that's super old. I reckon dead rabbits is a sign of snakes. This is dangerous. Horseshoes are good luck, aren't they? Back at the family house, I settled into life on the farm. They're lupins and oats. That's the sheep feed. That's what the little the lupin pods. Yep. That's what they end up like, and they love them. <laughs> enjoyed this little look at life in the wheat belt and developed an appreciation for all the effort that goes into making that little box of wheat bix or bottle of canola oil. I haven't been making as many videos during the pandemic as I've been laying low and working a bit but I will be picking this up again now that I'm traveling around more. So thanks for tuning into my channel Roxanne Taylor Media and I will see you again soon.